Hey friends, welcome or welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Bridget and I make home and DIY content here on YouTube. My husband and I currently live in an apartment so I'm always looking for creative ways to enjoy our hobbies in a relatively small space and for a relatively small budget. I've got a really great project in store for you today, but before we get started, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you stay in the loop on all my videos. And of course, if you enjoyed today's video, I'd be so grateful to have you give it a thumbs up to help other people find my content. Thanks so much and and let's jump in. Today I'll be sharing my largest DIY to date on my YouTube channel that's perfect for those of you who love doing jigsaw puzzles but don't have room in your home to leave a half finished puzzle or just need a way to keep puzzles away from curious little hands or in my case paws between puzzling sessions. Two years ago I designed and built a puzzle table for my husband that can be collapsed and stored vertically in a closet all while keeping the sorted pieces and the partially completed puzzle securely in place. We love and use it so much that I decided to make this highly requested video Video tutorial so you can build one too. Let's get started. Before we get started with the actual tutorial, I just wanted to give you guys a glimpse of what the finished product looks like. This way it'll make a lot more sense when you see me doing the individual steps. So you can see we've got a piece of plywood here on top, another one on bottom, and then some 2x4 boards that are just making this kind of clamshell shape here. And we've got these metal pieces here that obviously act like stilts to hold it open, and we've got um, these clasps to hold it shut as well as this handle for carrying and then inside we have actually five layers the first one here is just an extra piece of half inch foam board it's actually insulation board that will keep everything really snug in place and then we have two full-size foam boards covered in felt this bottom one would have your puzzle that you're you know partially completed sitting on there and then this one is sandwiched to hold it really Really tight and then below that we have a third one that is full-sized as well as two half-size ones those ones you can use for sorting puzzle pieces as you're going but again everything sandwiches really nicely when it is all closed up Here's a quick tip for when you're buying lumber and looking through all the 1x2 boards. Odds are most of them will be in rough shape and decently bowed since they've been picked through, so I'd recommend looking in the back of the pile for a clump that's still banded together. You'll have better luck finding good lumber there. When you've got your four 1x2x8 boards, you'll need to cut them down to size. Two of them will be cut in half at the 4 foot mark, and the other two will be cut at 34 and 5 8 inches. When all is said and done, you should have four boards of each length. These will become the side frames for your puzzle table. Next, you'll want to sand each board so that it's very smooth. I used 220 grit sandpaper for this step. I also sanded the two large pieces of plywood that I had cut at the store to be 3 foot by 4 foot in size. To make the design as simple as possible, I will be attaching the frame at a right angle with exposed screws, so I'm marking where I need to pre-drill two screw holes into each end of my 4 foot boards. You could also attach these from the inside using pocket holes for a cleaner look if you've got a Craig jig handy. When the holes are drilled, I'm giving them a quick sand to avoid any exposed splinters of wood. Now it's time to assemble the frame. I laid four of my boards on top of my 3 by 4 foot plywood to use as a reference while I'm screwing the frame together. I'm also bracing the inside with a speed square to ensure a 90 degree angle at each of the four corners. I repeated this process so that I had two frames total. Then I'm removing the plywood and flipping the frame over. You'll notice that I've got a drop cloth down as a precaution to protect my floor while I apply wood glue to the top of the frame. It's nice to have an extra set of hands for this next part to make sure you align the sides before lowering the plywood onto the frame. When it's in place, you'll nail everything together. I'm super grateful to have my brad nailer this time around, but if you don't have one, you can do this step by hand. That's what we did when we built our original box a few years ago. I'm taking a cloth and wiping away any excess glue before repeating this process with the second frame and leaving them to cure overnight. 
While the glue dries, I'm going to assemble the boards for the inside of the box. You'll notice that this insulation board is printed on one side, and that shows through the felt, so I'm making sure this solid side is facing the felt to make everything look cleaner. Then, I'm adding Fabri-Tac glue along the edges before using my staple gun to pull the felt tight and staple it into place. I always work from the center out, stapling opposite sides first. I chose this antique white shade of felt because it is easier on the eyes than a bright white while puzzling. When you're done, you'll have three large insulation boards measuring 30 by 42 inches, and two half-size boards measuring 30 by 21 inches. One large board will be for the puzzle itself, and the small boards are for storing your sorted pieces. The other two large boards sandwich on top of the pieces to hold everything in place during storage. You'll want to make sure you press the felt down into the glue and allow plenty of time for it to dry before you go back and trim off any excess fabric. Now that the wood glue has cured, I've sandwiched the two halves of our table together and I'm making marks 6 inches from each edge as well as one in the center of the 4 foot sideboards. These are where I'll be attaching hinges. I recommend pre-drilling holes to help your screws go into place, but make sure you don't drill all the way through the wood. I also like screwing in one top and one bottom screw before adding the others and tightening everything up. When all the hinges are attached, I'm rotating the table 180 degrees. As you can see, the table should open like a clamshell at this point. Now I'm ready to mark one foot in from each edge so I can add the two chest latches that will hold it shut during storage. For the sake of full transparency and because it made me laugh, I decided to keep this clip in the video so you can see me installing the bottom half of the latch upside down. <laughs> You'll see me fix it in a bit, but the process for marking holes and pre-drilling is still the same. Again, make sure you don't pre-drill all the way through the wood for this step. Using the latch arm as a reference, I'm positioning the top half of the latch where I want it and then marking, pre-drilling, and screwing it in as before. And here's the moment of truth when I realized I installed the latch upside down, so I flipped it 180 degrees and was actually able to use the bottom original hole as my new top hole and add a new one below it. Once that was installed, I had a second moment of truth where it all worked properly and I was able to repeat the process for the second latch. Now it's time to add the 6 inch PVC handle, so I'm making marks at 21 and 27 inches to ensure it's centered between the two latches. I then took my largest drill bit and pre-drilled two holes. Just my luck though, I made a rookie foaming mistake and this next step was out of the frame, but thankfully it's pretty intuitive when you see the finished handle. So what I did was thread about 4 feet of macrame cord folded in half through the holes and the PVC riser before tying each end in a knot to keep it from slipping back through. Feel free to also trim off any excess cord on the end. Inside. Okay, I swear this is the last weird camera mishap. I have no idea what it was focusing on, but clearly not my hands. All I'm doing here is placing the metal strap tie in the inner corner at a spot that allows it to pivot freely before marking, pre-drilling, and then screwing it almost all the way in, but still allowing it to swing. I repeated this on the other side to create two stilts that hold the table open while puzzling. I also used wood glue to add a small piece of wood on the bottom edge of each side to act as guides for the stilts. I recruited my husband one more time to do a brief demonstration of how to set up and take down the puzzle table. The one shown here is the original one we made, just to show you what it looks like painted. You could of course also leave the wood bare or even stain it. As you can see, he easily fit a 2000 piece puzzle on here, and thanks to the felt covered insulation boards, everything stayed in place. If you notice a few of the sorted pieces on the smaller boards stick to the top felt board, you can spray the latter with some static guard to help prevent that. 
Another benefit of using felt in the design is that it grips the top of the table just enough to keep it in place while you're puzzling so that it doesn't slide off even though the table is propped up at an angle that makes it more comfortable to puzzle without bending over a horizontal surface. I'm so proud of this design I made because I've never seen another one like it. It solves so many of the issues jigsaw puzzlers have, especially those of us who live in small spaces. Now we can comfortably puzzle right here on our couch whenever we want, and easily tuck partially completed puzzles away for storage so that they don't take up space and our cats can't get to them. Not to mention, the total cost to make this was only about $100, whereas a traditional non-portable puzzle table easily costs $200 or more. As always, thanks for hanging out with me today. I'm really pleased with the design of today's project. It's absolutely changed the way we do puzzles and I'll never go back to having them take over our kitchen table again. If you found this tutorial helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel. And if you know of someone who would love this for themselves, send the link their way. Thanks again and see you next time.